Growing up in South Bend, was Notre Dame always a dream? Was it always a goal to go there? Or did you think about a lot of places when you decided to go to college? I thought about a lot of places, but in the back of my mind, Notre Dame was always a dream school for me. Um, as, I, as I got older, um, you know, I started to watch more, more and more basketball, and they started putting women's basketball on more. Mm -hmm. And I noticed Notre Dame was had a really good team, and I would come, I would come and watch, and I was right there around the corner. So my mom would take me to the games, and it so happened, you know, 2001 they won the national championship mm -hmm. with the best team in the nation, and um, I got to experience that and be a part of that, and um, that's when I first started admiring Notre Dame as, you know, the women's basketball program because everybody knows Notre Dame for football and tradition, community academics, and things like that, and I really was too young to understand it and put it in perspective, but as I continued to get older and older, you know, I knew that it was a dream school, um, and it's tough to get in, you know, and it's kind of the ideal place for academics and athletics. Does Notre Dame feel like a family to you? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Um, it's funny because the other day, I, and you know, I don't know anything about what happens on other campuses, but I feel like this doesn't. Um, we were practicing, and we weren't having such a good practice, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Father Jenkins just walks through. And um, he just he just walks through and we're like, Father, you know, like what is he doing? You know, I don't, uh, you know what I mean, Father James, what are you doing? You know, what are you walking through the, the, the field house for? And he comes through and he just he says a prayer for us on the court. And um, practice got better, you know, I don't know <laughs> real quick, is, you know. But um, just things like that. And you know, he he um, reached out to me and um, he asked to come. He asked me to come see him. I was like, Oh gosh, I felt like I was going to the principal's office, you know. And um, he just told me how proud of me he was. I just wanted to, I, I couldn't let you leave here without me telling you how proud I am of you and how you represent the, the university and yourself. And this is Father Jenkins, Father, you know, that runs our university. He has a million other things he can do. How did that make you feel? It made me feel, it, it, was, it was like, wow, you know, you really pay close attention to, you know, I matter to you. And I think when you come here, you are not a number, that people know you and who you are, no, no matter what you do, you know, um, from, you know, non-student athletes. I didn't think it mattered. I think it, to him, I was just Skyler. You know, we didn't even talk about basketball. He was just saying how he was proud of me and the woman I developed into, and I was just taken back, and he brought me to tears, you know, almost. And it's just special when you can have that relationship because it's such a big community, and Notre Dame deals with so many things. For him to take the time out of his schedule to tell me that, that just kind of shows you, puts in perspective a little bit how special, you know, this school is. In doing the research for this interview, I was told that you absolutely hate to lose. Oh, yes. Where I don't know it? if I love to win or hate to lose, but I would have to say I, I hate to lose. Hate to lose more than love to win. I hate to lo lose more than love to win. Interesting. How, where does that come from? Why are you such a fierce competitor on the court? You know, I think it's, uh, you know, my mom didn't play any sports, but I think it comes from her. Mm -hmm. You know, well, she did, gymnastics is a sport. Right. You know, she played, <laughs> right. she did gymnastics. Let's clarify. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that, you know. Um, but I think it comes from her. Mm -hmm. She's very competitive, and she'll try to act like she's not, but if we, uh, we could be playing cards or something simple like that. And if she loses, we're going to keep playing, keep playing. And, you know, it's a dumb game anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's what she'll, you know, she'll get upset about it. And she's super competitive. And I think that competitive nature comes from her, you know. And she never let me settle for complacency. You know, she always wanted to challenge me and wanted me to be the best person that I can be. So it kind of brings that out of me. Why do you think you're unique on the court? I don't know. Do you think you work harder? I think that I think that I work hard. I think I work smarter. Mm -hmm. I think that people have drafted up a picture of what a basketball player is supposed to look like, mm -hmm. and I don't think I fit that description. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? Because I've been told that mm -hmm. um, a number of times. A lot of people, you know, in doing the research, you know, they, they comment on how pretty you are, how attractive you are. Does that bug you in a little bit because you are so good on the court? Would you rather the focus be on your skills? I don't care why they watch. I just, can't, I just want them to watch, mm -hmm. you know. Because you love basketball that I much. Because I love basketball that much. And if I can impact it and bring attention to the game for the right reasons, mm -hmm. uh, 
then then do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care if they. You know, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, was, I'm, my, I'm my mother's child. You know, <laughs> if I if I you know, I get it from my mother. Mother, right? So if I could, you know, if I'm half as beautiful as she is, I got it right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I'm I'm thankful and blessed in, in that sense. You mm -hmm. know, um, but I just control the things I can control, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you have to take it. Uh, one situation at a time, you're taking a stride. Tell me about the Lil Wayne tweet. <laughs> How did I know that was coming up? <laughs> Have you been asked that a million times? Yes. Yes. Maybe it, one million. Does it bug I, you? No. No, it doesn't. What is it? Tell me. Um, he tweeted, and, and everybody that knows me knows that I am a huge Lil Wayne fan, mm -hmm. and was well before he sent me a tweet. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the time when we beat UConn. It was my sophomore year in the final four and I remember it must have happened at night time and I was you know so tired that I passed out right after the game and the celebration and uh, I woke up the next morning and I had 74,000 more followers <laughs> and on I was Twitter like, you know, I didn't play that good more, yes. you know what I mean I played all right um but that that happened I'm like what well, you know who's the culprit behind this you know so I went down and, and everybody's like Sky, they called me like, Sky, did you see, you know, Lil Wayne tweet you? And I, I got these calls, I'm just waking up and I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. So I go check and I'm like, wow, <laughs> he really tweeted me. And he referred to you as his wife, correct? And, if, and I didn't know we were married. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know we were that married. It was knowledge enough. to you. Yeah, it was knowledge to me. And, but it wasn't that that got me. Right. It was that he said, congrats to my wife, Sky Dick, and the fighting Irish. Mm -hmm. He watched the game. Mm -hmm. It wasn't word of mouth like, hey, check this girl. Mm -hmm. He's, she, play, she plays for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and I watched this game. And that, to me, was like, wow, our, our, our sport is reaching this, this, this d new dimension that's never been seen. You know, uh, it reaches this demographic. People are really watching. People are watching. Yeah. The, the best rapper alive is watching women's basketball. Yeah. Why does that surprise you, Skylar? Because you never hear those type of comment mm -hmm. on women's basketball. And um, that's what hit me more than, than the tweet itself. You mentioned that when you first got to Notre Dame, you didn't quite realize how difficult it would be. Was it challenging for you? Yeah, when I came in, I came from a high school that was um, um, pre-med magnet school. So I shadowed Notre Dame women's basketball team doctor. Mm -hmm. I shadowed Dr. Fred Furlick mm -hmm. at um, South Bend Orthopedics. Mm -hmm. And um, I would be in his surgeries, and I would be holding bones. Like, I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. And when I got here, I was, like, smacked in the face <laughs> with the, the curriculum, you know. Um, <laughs> it wasn't that it was, <laughs> but it was it was chemistry, yeah. it was calculus, and I was asked to, to be on this great basketball team and, and find my way to, to fit in and, and do my best in all three. Now, I, I did good, and, and, and I did better than I thought I did. And then I kind of, you know, recalculated my academic, uh, you know, route. Um, but it was tough. Yeah. Did you have a favorite teacher? Did you have a favorite class? It was funny because my chemistry teacher is, is the professor that they, the, the character Shrek is based off of. <laughs> it was Dr. Uh, Lappin, mm -hmm. Professor Lappin. So, you know, uh, his accent was, uh, I don't know if I can do it, I can try, but you, know, you, have, you have four valence electrons. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how he said it. But it was, it was funny because um, everybody knows him as that and, and, and Shrek and uh, you know that when you go in his class because he kind of looks like him. I think that it would be very difficult to balance the rigors of what you have to do on the court and getting ready mm -hmm. with keeping your grades up and yes. getting to class and making sure you excel both in the classroom and on the court. How do you do that? Yeah, you, know, you know what I thought? I thought like, do we get special treatment? You know, everybody says, that, you know, do, do you go to class? Right. You know, yes. And God forbid I miss a class and Coach McGraw, you know, finds out, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You, you have to do the same thing that everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you might have teachers that are a little harder on you because they expect you to be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had teachers like that and professors like that. Are you pulling all-nighters like everybody else sometimes? Oh, yes. <laughs> pull an pull a all-nighter um, and then have practice. Pull an all-nighter the day you go, have to go to a row game. Take your homework on the road game. Do homework before you leave to play Connecticut mm -hmm. on the bus. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or what, what have you. Final question. 
what's the future going to hold for Skylar Diggins? I hope it's, um, I hope I, you know, there is no box for me. I don't want to think outside the box. I want to say that, you know, it is no box. And um, I'm so excited about uh, the future. I'm excited about tomorrow to get at practice and, and to get better with my team. But um, there's so many things I want to do that I don't even know really what, where, they, where to start. Right. But I know that I will, I will do it. And, and just like when I was younger and I will say, you know, I dream about going to Notre Dame and, and I did it. And um, I'm going to say I'm going to take it one, one day at a time and, and complete all the goals that I have. Whatever they are. Whatever they are.